Hey guys, it's Tamara back with another video this week. This is our bonus video. So we're going to talk about families. We're going to start our conversation about families. Um, in the last video, if you did not watch that one, I'm going to post it in the description box below. In the last video, we talked about childhood onset schizophrenia and childhood onset psychosis. And if you did not see that video, I encourage you to go back and watch it because um, it's going to help us kind of conceptualize what happens to kids as they're growing up in problematic home environments. So in this video, we're going to be talking about family dynamics and family roles. And so for the month of November and a little bit of December, we're going to be talking families because family is typically the big issue over the holiday season. It's Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's where a lot of people start to feel overwhelmed. They start to feel uh, unresolved feelings coming up, unresolved conflicts. And so we want to tackle those things, I'm sure, especially you, um, because this is a time of year where you're going to have to figure out how am I going to navigate my family? I know I've been thinking about it myself. So uh, we're going to jump into that. So the benefits for you today in this video is that you're going to be able to identify various family roles that we all play within our families. And hopefully you can identify yourself and also see what has happened to you within the family dynamic of your family. So let's go ahead and just jump right on in. Okay. So family roles. Family roles are basically uh, roles that we... Uh, kind of assume or acquire over the course of our development. When we're born into a family, we have absolutely no idea where we belong. But as time goes on, social norms, gender norms, cultural norms, expectations, goals, um, uh, you know, parental expectations, things like that, they all get placed on us as we're developing throughout the lifespan or at least throughout childhood and adolescence. And we're assigned a role based on the part that we play within a family. And that assigned role can play a major role in how you not only view yourself, but how you view the world in general. So we're gonna talk about that and zone in on that all throughout the month of November and part of December. So I wanna go down family roles and there are four important family roles that I wanna highlight. I, I do have my notes here, so I'm gonna be looking down and up and down. So uh, just a heads up there. Um, but let's start with the most problematic role within a family. And that role is known as the hero. Gee, I have about maybe 15 clients right now. And I'm thinking of like 15 adolescents. Um, I do see some adults as well, but but I have 15 adolescents who are the hero. And unfortunately, that causes other children within the family to feel less than or to feel like they don't matter. So let me give you the definition of a hero. A hero is somebody who is perfect on the outside, highly favored, loved, cherished, uh, bolstered encouraged to meet their their highest goals in life. Uh, there's typically very high expectations placed on this child. Uh, the child is the one who went to college, the one who got a good job, the one who married the rich guy, the one who um, had three children just at the perfect time, the one who went on to become a lawyer, the one who went on to become a psychologist or a surgeon, the one who has a perfect white picket fence family on the outside. Unfortunately, that's a fantasy because a lot of heroes are kids who are hurting on the inside. So let me tell you what's going on on the inside of most heroes. Overprotection, overbearing, perfectionistic, overwhelmed with life, uh, unauthentic, difficulty managing tasks and staying on track, inattention, disorganization, um, emotional detachment sometimes, and I'm going to just say type A personality. This individual becomes exactly what their parent or their family has pushed 
them into as far as a roll. Um, on the outside, they look good. On the inside, they're falling apart most of the time. They're constantly stressed and overwhelmed. These individuals might also be depressed and suicidal. They might also have periods in their life where they just completely give up. They have what I call an existential crisis or an existential uh, period of discomfort. And they have a hard time just settling in life because they're constantly on the go. That hero role, they have to live up to. And everybody kind of expects them to be the hero. That's the sad part. So we're gonna talk more about this as we go along. The next one is the scapegoat, all right? The scapegoat becomes the problem child, the bad child, the child who's the juvenile delinquent, the child who has problematic sexual behavior, the child who robbed a store, uh, the child who bullies everybody, right? But unfortunately, this child on the inside is breaking apart as well because they're rejected and they're hurt and they are tagged as difficult and oppositional and they have conduct issues according to other people. Um, unfortunately, the scapegoat, the child who's the scapegoat or the adult who's the scapegoat in the family, um, they typically began to turn their resentment inward. So they struggle with, with what's called an internal locus of control and they don't know how to manage their life. They feel that everything on the inside of them is the reason for why they are where they're at. They don't have the ability to externalize it, to see that, okay, it's because of your aunt projecting onto you that you've become this way. It's because of your father who wasn't a dad that you, as the reason for why you became this way. It's because your mother abandoned you and put you in foster care that you became this way. They internalize it as I'm the problem. I messed up. I need help. Nobody loves me. Okay. That's the scapegoat in the family role. The next one is the lost child. <laughs> okay. This poor baby ends up being extraordinarily confused about who they are. They have absolutely no identity. So let me let me go over some things that um, uh, might characterize a lost child. So on the outside, a lost child may seem quiet, shy, introverted, really highly intelligent, which most of them are, um, uh, isolating, withdrawn, right? That's how they look on the outside. On the inside, they feel stuck, lonely, confused, uncertain. Uh, they want to have connections, but they don't quite know how to because they don't quite fully know who they are. And they also struggle with conceptualizing how to operate in their life. They also struggle with making decisions. They kind of overthink things for fear of making a mistake or not making the right decision. Um, and they also kind of hold back because they don't want people to judge them and they don't want people to psychoanalyze them and misperceive who they are. So they are very defensive most of the time. And the reason they are a lost child is because they, they have never really been paid attention to. They, they've, they've been the quiet one over in the corner uh, who's always shy and introverted. Uh, these kind of kids, I have a lot of, um, and at my practice here, we have, I have a lot of lost childs. I, I probably shouldn't say it that way. A lot of children who feel like the lost child. That's how I should say that. And um, treatment of them is very hard because they don't have an internal locus of control. They have an external locus of control. Everything on the outside of the world is con um, controlling them and dominating them and, and causing them to feel the way that they feel about themselves on the inside. They feel like they have no voice, basically. And last but not least, the clown or the mascot. So that's the next child. So the mascot or the family clown is the one who's always joking around, the one who always has something funny to say, the one who's always supposedly positive and bright and, and is always in high spirits. Um, the mascot or the family clown is the one who takes nothing seriously, absolutely neglects responsibilities. Everything is a party. Everything is a joyride. On the inside, though, completely fallen apart, right? So what I have written here is hides pain, feels afraid, and feels inadequate, 
right? They feel inadequate, they hide their pain, they internalize. These kind of individuals may have been internalizers as, as children, um, and they don't know how to experience and express their emotions. And as a result, they stay stuck because on the outside, people are used to them telling jokes, being funny, being the silly one, being the life of the party. Nobody ever really zooms in and says, oh, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're confused, you're suicidal, you know. Nobody ever really looks at that because they're so used to looking at the mascot or the family clown as being the one who takes nothing serious. Why would you? They're always joking around. All right, guys, thanks so much for being with me today in this video. I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. If you are not a subscriber, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Why? Because I post videos every Monday and Friday, but then I also give you a bonus video on Wednesday sometimes. I've been giving you a lot of bonus videos, by the way. Um, and I want to start making like a little bit more videos so that you can maybe have two in one day. So if you can't relate to something in one video, I want to be able to give you something else that you may be able to relate to as well. Let me know in the comment section below if that's okay, if that's something that you guys would like. Do you guys want more videos or do you think three times a week is enough? Let me know. I hear you. So let me know. Um, I also encourage you to check out a, a an international webinar that I'm going to be doing tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. It's with psychcentral.com. I'm going to be talking about eight signs of intergenerational trauma, and I think you're going to like that. So I'm going to post that registration link, which is free, in the description box below and in the comment section. Go ahead and click on that, guys. Also, the video will be downloaded to YouTube. So when that happens, I'm going to try to post it on my channel. That way you guys can watch the video. Um, so go ahead and register. I will put that link down in the comment section and in the description section below. All right, guys, I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.